three foot piece of ductwork, uh, cross broke with a sheet metal break, with, that's what the X is. We built the end cap and we're using a Pittsburgh machine. This is the most affordable option to get into uh, building your own ductwork. The Pittsburgh machine uses one inch of material for the female side and uses a quarter inch for the male side. So we have to, you have to allow an inch and a quarter for the, the seam. And it fits together like so and then you beat this tail over. We're gonna make a piece of 20 by 10 duck. We have to allow one inch for the Pittsburgh seam, one quarter inch for the male that fits into the Pittsburgh seam. We need the piece 31 and a quarter. The crow's foot I use is a V that helps me line it up on the shear because I can see down the blade of the shear. It helps you line up to cut. Tip of the V's on the blade. Okay, we're going to show you how to lay out the piece of duck and notch it. So what, what we had is we got our 10 inches. We allow our one inch for our Pittsburgh. This is our 20. This is the quarter inch for the male that fits inside of the Pittsburgh. What we're going to do is take three sides of this and mark one inch with the scribe. So I've got a scribe here. I'm going to set it one inch. Then we got a quarter inch, so I'll reset the scribe for one quarter inch. Now we got to come in, because we're making this a piece of L piece of duck, we got to come in and mark this at 11, our 10 inches plus that one inch. So the scribe I use goes out to 12 inches. So we mark this at 11. I scribe it. So right now we have our one inch, 10 inch, we've got a line at 11, 20 inches and our quarter. Now what we need to do is notch this. So we notch this one inch, we come in here, we notch it about a, a 15 degree angle or allow about a quarter of an inch, just kind of give it the good eye, it's no. Notch the next one, about a 15 degree angle. Coming here at our 11 inch mark, notch it. Now we have our piece of ductwork notched and ready to bend and run through the Pittsburgh machine. We're going to use a 10 knocker, 24 gauge Pittsburgh machine to make the Pittsburgh seam. cross break it. We go to our notches, clamp it down, put just enough bend that makes it rigid so it doesn't go backwards, keeps the ductwork from popping. Okay, now that we have our X built, we have to bend that quarter inch and you can see it right down the line. Bend it up at a 90 degree. We line up our notch, 90 degree. We've just built one section. We're gonna assemble the, the two L's to make the complete piece of duck. Sheet metal hammers are flat on one side, so you can either set and beat it down like this or you can put the hammer sideways. Okay, we can use a pneumatic Pittsburgh seam hammer. It is a lot faster to close the seam than a hammer. So we'll put it together. I like to line up the ends and then do a couple with a hammer. 
keeps them from sliding. Now we have to bend our drive cleats. We're going to hook this together with S and drives. So we have to bend a half inch. This is for our drive cleats to assemble. Now there's two ways of doing it. Most guys carry one of these on their truck. And then we're going to build one with a cleat bender. Okay, this is the way, and then if you're doing a lot of duct work, you'll want to use the next step, a cleat bender to build it. Okay, to bend the drive cleats on the duct work, we're going to use a 10 knocker 30 inch cleat bender, and this spins the half inch. To use a cleat bender, you have the top one. This pulls it over part way. There's another handle back here that you hit, release. You push it forward and it drops back out. And then you bring that top one back over. It builds your half inch, but it doesn't smash it over all the way. We're gonna make a 20 by 10 end cap to go on the piece of ductwork we built. We have to add two inches all the way around. So we need 12 by 22 inch piece and we'll notch it and bend it so the S and drives go together. Now we have to scribe a line one inch all the way around. Notch these. I like to put an X on my end caps or cross break them. So we're going to do this on our 10 knocker four foot box and pan brake. Now we have a cross broke. Then we have to bend this half inch for our drive cleats. And you can do this on the brake. Usually when you bend a half inch so it fits together seamlessly, you want to mark a line at 3 eighths of an inch. And mark 3 eighths of an inch with the scribe. The opposite side of the X. So when you bend this, the X is facing out. So now we put it in our sheet metal brake. We're right on that 3 8 We bend it all the way over. You push it down, but you don't smash the seam all the way. Now we're ready to bend our one inch for our S cleats up at a 90 degree. Okay, this has to be bent up at a 90. It's tough to bend it all the way on the brake, but with the tin knocker, box and pan brake, you can remove the fingers. The various depths can be adjusted Now to put the end cap on, we're going to use S cleats. So we got to cut them to length. I usually put them up there, cut them about a quarter of an inch short. Makes it easy for assembly. Now once they're cut, they're smashed together. So we have to take a screwdriver, shove all the way in and just spread them apart. Now I like to put these, their S's, I like to put them so they're facing out. It just makes it easier to put the ductwork together. Okay, then we slide the one inch that we built, bent in a 90. Now we have to cut drive cleats. I like to have them about an inch longer. We have to spread these apart also. It hooks onto both sides. You leave approximately the same amount on each side. Now 
Now we bend them over. 